dead. Two parts. Two parts. Yeah. Part one. <laughs> so Kupishen then was developed in a time when they had armor. Mm -hmm. So the movements are designed to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Throughout the time when the school was alive, did armor change and has that changed? Yes, yes. Yes, How yes, yes. How would you change the types of armor? Well, well, of course, you know, I don't think it's just the type of the armor that is more important here. The most important aspect in classical martial art is adaptation. So if you need to uh, study the armor before going on war, etc., etc., it means you need a lot of data and information, which it's possible if you're a very good spy, etc., etc. But the thing is, you have a new armor. What does it mean? The last armor was damaged on the battlefield. Uh, you receive a strike in a certain area that the armor could not cover. And this happened many times. So by the study of the armor, you can see what are the main place frequently attack by the things. For from that, you're going to create you know, different aspects in order to reinforce those area. But then when you reinforce those area, which maybe were lighter, now they become heavier, or they are a little bit more difficult, so you're going to wear them and try to do the movement with it. So this is, this is something empiric. You, you learn from what you learn from the pain, then you try. And then when you're on the battlefield, you try to make it better, better, better. So of course, movement change with the weapon, uh, for, for, of course, and it changes according to the evolution of the weapon. But at the end of the day, you still hold him, hold them, you still do the same work. It's always the same things. What changes is your vision and your capacity, your capacity to adapt to anything. And it's the same. If we talk about the uh, feudal time armor, you have to you have to think also with uh, uh, 12th century uh, European armor. How can you move? Of course, it's impossible to do those locks. It's impossible because the armor is not made and think different. The armor in both country or both continent, you can see, reflect a special vision of war and a way of moving using the body. So if the uh, our Japanese armor is very m mobile, you see the sleeve, so the haidate can move in many ways. Huh? When you run, sometimes it can even turn back against you if you do a big motion like this. The, the sleeve can come to you, so you have a certain way, for example, to use your shoulder or not. You cannot do very big movement. Then also the, the weapon is at the, at the belt. So uh, if you move too much with your hip, everything's going to move in a certain way or something like that. So when, for example, the attack and you move like this, oh, it, it catches it because the armor. So you have to move in a way that it slides on the armor. You move a little bit, not too much, then bam, and the kick very low. Huh? So it teaches you the economy of the movement. For example, here, of course, you have all the protection. You want to attack that area. Here in that area, what you want to do is to slide in in order to strike, to reach that area. That's the reason why sometimes when you attack, you have those kind of attack, and bam, and you aim that area. And from here, pat, you stop, then you move. That's how, for example, Ganseki, a technique like Ganseki can work. Huh? You don't have the time to do one and two here, it's gonna catch you, and plus you have the helmet, how are you gonna do with this? Huh? So the technique will change. When you arrive, you might protect your elbow and you do this, then boom on the face, and here you see you don't strike here, you strike where the armor is open. And not with that kind of strike, because it's not enough, but with the shikanken, because it's more deep, and even stick the finger, then when you have this bomb, you catch, and you yoro idoshi. Thank you.